Fox 44 Sports presents Baylor Football, Chasing a Championship. Brought to you locally by Louisiana Crab Shack, Oliver Brothers Transmissions, and Richie's Western Wear. Hey there, and good evening to you. Welcome live outside Sundance Square. We're just blocks away from the Baylor Bears team hotel as they get ready to chase another Big 12 championship. Mandy, the Bears are back in the big time. Absolutely. It's going to be an exciting game tomorrow. I mean, if it, there's anything close to that first matchup three weeks ago, we are in for a treat tomorrow. I am very excited. Yeah, should be a lot of fun. Now, DFW is a place that Baylor's very familiar with. This is their fifth trip here playing Texas Tech and TCU over the last couple of years, a place they've become very familiar with and has been really a measuring stick for this program over the last couple of years. You think about two years ago, last week, I'm sitting there at TCU talking to Blake Lynch after the game. They just went 1-11. Blake tells us we are going to make a bowl game. We're going to make a bowl game next year when they're 1-11. Fast forward a year later, AT&T Stadium, it's Blake who gets the game-clinching interception over Texas Tech to clinch that bowl game, get the sixth win, and then they would go on to win 12 of their next 13 ball games, a launching pad, AT&T Stadium, all the way back around. Absolutely, I really think that you know that, that Texas Tech game last year. We knew we had to we have to win, or, or we're going to go home. And I think having that pressure on us, and kind of having that playoff feel where it's winning and going to the next round or losing and going home. I think that got us ready for this season. We have a lot of guys, you know, from Coach McGuire all the way down through Charlie who've finished their high school careers and high school seasons at AT&T Stadium. And Joey started saying to me the other day, he was, you know, screaming, as you know, Joey, screaming and yelling like there's nothing better than playing there. That means you've had a great season. So I think those things will all be fun for us. But, our, you know, one thing I like about our teams, they're very business-like. They just keep the main thing the main thing. So it's a familiar place in AT&T Stadium. It's a familiar opponent in the Oklahoma Sooners. Two teams that played one half of great football a couple weeks ago and one half they wish they could have back. So in a tightly contested game, there are some differing opinions on what these players will take from that meeting. One thing they can agree with, though, is that you can better dance with who brung you. Got to trust the process and stay process-oriented. I think we got ahead of the game. and. You know, I think we were kind of a little bit surprised that we jumped into that kind of lead, but we just got to get back to our roots and uh, just kind of play football, you know, how we can play. Same applies as far as playing our standard and doing what we do, going out there and playing our type of game, playing our style of football, and um, just, just, just playing ball. I'm trusting in everyone around us, trusting in the coaches, trusting everybody, and just, just playing Oklahoma ball. Well, Baylor's defense has been dominating this season, number one in most of the uh, categories in the Big 12. And it's not a surprise because when you have a defensive coordinator like Phil Snow, if you lose one of your best players, it's not that much of a surprise. Take a look. To me, this season is about as much about what Phil Snow's done as anything else. You know, you know, I stand up here. Pe you know, people say good things about me when we win. It's the seventh straight year Matt Rule and Phil Snow are coaching side by side, leaving their mark at Temple in 2016, winning the conference championship and ranking third nationally in total defense. Snow brought that same pedigree to Baylor and emphasized the next man up mentality, and it came to fruition as they didn't lose a step when Clay Johnston tore his ACL. We develop everybody. We're all demanding the same standard from anyone. Like, if you're a walk-on or if you're, uh, like, if you're if you're brought here, like, whoever is here, you have to play at the standard, or you know what I'm saying, or it doesn't work. So now we play everybody at the same standard. So when someone does go down, it's not a drop off. It's just right in. With Johnston out, sophomore Terrell Bernard got the call, and Johnston's role as a player coach got even bigger. Clay is. You have to know Clay to know who Clay is, but. He's a very uh, goofy, kind of funny guy, so have him in, have, having him around lightens the mood a lot. And uh, he's, I mean, he's a great football player. He knows the game inside and out. So having him help you on the field and off the field and just being that support system, even though he's on the field with you, uh, really helps the team. I think the biggest impact Clay has had is in the training room. You know, he sits there and, you know, he's imparting knowledge on young players, right? Um, sometimes when you get hurt, you think, you know, it's the end of the world. You, you know, you start thinking no one cares about, you know, all those different things. And I think for him to be in the locker room just with his maturity and him understanding, well, he's got a lot of faith. He understands that, you know, this happened to him for a reason and something good is going to come out of it. I think he's able to then impact those other young players that are in the training room. And then he comes out in the field. I mean, he, I think it's a reminder to everybody, like, you know, don't take this for granted. You know, it can be taken away from you at any moment. And he's just a great teammate. He's just a great, you know, guy to be around. So I think all those things have an impact. 
So we talked about what the Bears are going to be able to do in this game. Now let's head north of the red after the break and hear what the Oklahoma Sooners are bringing to AT&T Stadium. But before we go, did you know Baylor is one of only three Power 5 teams in the top 15 in the country in scoring offense and scoring defense? Charlie Brewer and company rank 15th on offense, while Phil Snow and his defensive unit rank 13th. For preparing for your day, trust Chief Meteorologist Mike LaPointe and the Fox 44 Storm Team. Fox 44 News, weather rate certified, Central Texas most accurate forecast. Liquid Snow for Ariat. For Ariat Clothing, shop Richie's, save money. I love the flavors of Louisiana. You can have all the flavors of Louisiana cuisine right here in Waco. I am at Louisiana Crab Shack. Let's go check out all that is Louisiana cuisine. Let's go. This is our combo number one. It has a pound of snow crab, half a pound of tiger shrimp, corn, potatoes, and we even added in a half a pound of sausage. It's mixed with our own bottom of the bayou sauce in medium. It has a really good flavor. It's just enough spice. Need your news now? Visit fox44news.com and download the app today. Oliver Brothers Transmissions has been serving Central Texas since 1965. Oliver Brothers is committed to providing fast and reliable transmission services to Central Texas. We are proud of our outstanding reputation over the years and appreciate our customers. We will always give you our best and want your business. So next time you need quality, affordable transmission service, stop by Oliver Brothers in Coppers Cove, Temple, Waco, and Bryan College Station. Visit us online at oliverbrotherstransmissions.com. Travel out ahead, my share, man. I've been everywhere. At CTWP throughout Central Texas, we support and provide quality, dependable service guaranteed. CTWP, your copier company. Liquid Snow for Ariat. For Ariat Clothing, shop Richie's, save money. You're watching Chasing a Championship. Brought to you locally by Louisiana Crab Shack, Oliver Brothers Transmissions, and Richie's Western Wear. There it is, the house that Jerry built. AT&T Stadium has been the site of Super Bowls, Final Fours, state championship games, concerts, boxing matches, you name it. All is quiet tonight, but tomorrow night, or tomorrow morning rather, it's going to host its fifth Big 12 title game between the Baylor Bears and the Oklahoma Sooners. And of course, Lincoln Riley, no stranger to this ball game. In fact, in his third year coaching, that's all he knows as the Oklahoma Sooners taking on the Baylor Bears tomorrow. Matt Rule, this is his first Big 12 title game, but not his first championship game and certainly not his first rodeo. You go back to his time at Temple, his first championship game, they took on a very good Houston Cougar team and Tom Herman, a team that ended up going on to beat Florida State in the Peach Bowl. Then the next year, he learned from that experience and was able to get his team to beat a very good Navy ball club. Those are experiences that he will lean on heading in to tomorrow's game. I messed the first championship game up by trying to change what we did and uh, you know worry too much about them. The next year we were playing Navy, and Navy, the three weeks before they had played us, had scored 42, 66, and 73 points. Watching the film, I, had, I remember like having a dazed look. You know, let's just go out there. Let's be us, man. Let's let's play how we play. Championship games are different. Everything about them is different, and uh, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, our focus has got to just be on this one and how we can play our very best, and we know we're going to have to play well to beat Baylor. I mean, they're, they're a darn good football team. If Matt Rule is to lead the Baylor Bears to a win on Saturday, it would be the program's 12th win of the season, and that would set a new program record. Well, you know, Matt, it is a lot easier said than done beating the four-time defending national, or just, excuse me, the four-time uh, Big 12 champs and the Oklahoma Sooners. But for more on that, we were going to send it to Brian Brinkley in our sister station in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma quarterback Jalen Hurts has had possibly the biggest role on offense of any Sooner quarterback in history. Hurts has had a direct impact on 60% of OU's offensive plays this season, and he's on pace to break Jack Mildren's school record for carries in a season by a quarterback. The Sooner offense sputtered in the first half against Baylor in Waco, and this week he was asked if he learned anything from that. The importance of execution, not really something I learned, something I knew. 
um, just something that we had lack of. So we just got to execute. Um, I think that the story of this, the whole entire season has been how well can we go out there and do our jobs with the right focus and intensity, you know, just, just going out there and, do, and, and, and doing it. Oklahoma's defense had their own struggles in that first half the first time against the Bears, but the Sooners dominated the second. You forced three three and outs and two turnovers and were led by OU's defensive leader, linebacker Kenneth Murray. Really the biggest thing was just keeping the faith um, and just understanding that, you know, you know, doing your job is, is enough and and if as long as we, you know, you know, keep our faith and continue to fight and you know, don't give up, then you know, good things will happen. Oklahoma used a grinded out approach to rally on offense in that first meeting with Baylor, going on four touchdown drives of nearly five minutes or longer. Against Oklahoma State, the Sooners used a trick play for a score, and the OU head coach was asked if that was partly done to give Baylor something to think about this week. Honestly, nothing. Nothing for Baylor or any other future opponents. I mean, just in that moment, just trying to win, trying to just do simply what you think is best. And we've, you know, with, with the way we've been running the ball, it's exciting because we, you know, we're, we're, we've been able to do some good things, launch scrimmage, backs are running well, and then we still got some exciting guys on the perimeter that can make you pay too. So I just don't ever want people to be able to tee off on us, you know, and so that's, we, we try to be, you know, multiple here and there, and, and uh, thought we had some good opportunities at it the other night. Opportunity for success awaits again on Saturday in the Big 12 championship game. So the last time these two teams met, the question was, could Baylor hang with this high-flying Oklahoma offense? And they proved that they could. Now they just have to do it over four quarters. So that if for the Baylor Bears is now gone, but they need to get it going on the defensive side of the ball. And this team knows they're good enough to beat this Oklahoma team. So when they say they want to go 1-0 this week, that is no longer just a dream. It is a true reality. It changes in a way that, like, I guess it was the first loss of, a, of the year, too. And the fact that we know what we can do. And I guess if we go out there now, that we know we can do off the bat, that we won't feel like we're, we're not supposed to be there. You know, everyone's going to say, you know, what are you going to do differently? I mean, we just played them three weeks ago. Like, we can't reinvent the wheel, you know, we can't come out here and hit our head against the wall and say, get, you know, we're going to go play. And so I think our guys are just confident. They know it's a great team we're playing. It's a great opportunity. But our guys, you know, I think they have the same mindset of we're going to try to go 1-0 this week and trust the preparation and trust the process that we have. And we'll get a player's perspective on this matchup as former Texas Tech standout and Southwest Conference Hall of Famer Tracy Saul gives us a player's view of how this one will shake out tomorrow in Arlington. But before we go, did you know Oklahoma has been so dominant in the Big 12 era? Dating back to 2000, the Sooners have more, won 11 or more games 15 times. Baylor has won 11 or more three times in that span. For context, the other schools in the state, Texas has 10 11-plus win seasons, while Texas A&M has just four. Need your news now? Visit fox44news.com and download the app today. And watch Fox 44 News, streamed live at 5 36 and 9. I love the flavors of Louisiana. You can have all the flavors of Louisiana cuisine right here in Waco. I am at Louisiana Crab Shack. Let's go check out all that is Louisiana cuisine. Let's go. This is our combo number one. It has a pound of snow crab, half a pound of tiger shrimp, corn, potatoes, and we even added in a half a pound of sausage. It's mixed with our own bottom of the bayou sauce in medium. It has a really good flavor. It's just enough spice. Liquid's new for Ariat. For area clothing, shop Richie's, save money. With years of service to the Waco and Central Texas area, Syntex Roof Systems has earned a reputation in delivering the highest quality roofing work and exceptional customer service. We've been locally owned and operated since 1987 and are dedicated to our community. Thank you, Syntex Roof Systems, for helping make Axtell Baptist Church great again. Stay at home with your hometown roofer, Syntex Roof. Oliver Brothers Transmissions has been serving Central Texas since 1965. Oliver Brothers is committed to providing fast and reliable transmission services to Central Texas. We are proud of our outstanding reputation over the years and appreciate our customers. We will always give you our best and want your business. 
So next time you need quality, affordable transmission service, stop by Oliver Brothers in Coppers Cove, Temple, Waco, and Bryan College Station. Visit us online at oliverbrotherstransmissions.com. From all of us at Volkswagen Waco, Happy Holidays! Liquid's new for Ariat. For Ariat clothing, shop Richie's, save money. You're watching Chasing a Championship. Brought to you locally by Louisiana Crab Shack, Oliver Brothers Transmissions, and Richie's Western Wear. And just a few miles down the road in Mansfield, the Mark Panthers putting a thumping on Munster tonight, 53 to 7. They are marching towards another state championship and trying to make it a three-peat at AT&T Stadium. Now, one guy who knows all about having success at the high school and then the college level is former Texas Tech defensive back Tracy Saul, a four-time All-Southwest Conference player, earned All-America honors as a junior for Spike Dykes and the Red Raiders, earning himself a spot in the Southwest Conference Hall of Fame. He now calls Waco home. He was kind enough to stop by Fox 44 and join us to talk about how he sees this game shaking out tomorrow at AT&T Stadium. As a former player, you come close like that in a game against an opponent and you see them again. What does that do to your psyche, seeing them again? I, I think it's a fantastic setup for them. They've, uh, you know, they, they were there. They knew they had it. Um, so I, I think their psyche going into the game is that they know they can do it. Um, it was their last time and, and, you know, just to take the next step. That defense has been so good all year long and it's kept them in a lot of games. When you watch Baylor and Matt Rule and, and Phil Snow's defense. Well, what do you see from them out there on the field? They're, they're tough, you know, and I, I go back to a couple of when he first got here and everybody talked about how difficult the practices were, how much they were hitting, you know, and, and, and tackling during practice during two days and um, it's paying off right now because they're tough. Um, and I think that stands out more than anything, you know, those guys are just tough and they're aggressive um, and, they're, and they're moving to the football. You're a guy obviously that knows for the football in the secondary at Texas Tech, all-time leader in career interceptions. Baylor, that was an area where they struggled last year. Now they're leading the conference in interceptions, getting those turnovers. How does a, tur a turnaround like that happen? I, th I think there's a couple of things there. I think Number one, they're more comfortable probably in the defense that they're running. Um, they got guys that have played in that system a little bit longer. I think that's part of it, but those guys up front are a huge part of that. Um, and, and the pressure that they're able to get on the quarterback with just a three-man front a lot of times. Um, they're getting a lot of pressure on that guy, so that helps the guys in back out a lot. What do you see from what Lincoln Riley is doing with that offense and really what they've done to teams kind of all year long? Yeah, the, you know, they just got so much talent running on that offense. Um, you know, quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, just so much talent there. Guys up front going to, you know, a bunch of them being in the NFL soon. And, uh, but they just got so much talent. And, and, and Lincoln tries to get those guys in open spaces, you know. And when you got talent like that um, and you can create that, then those guys are going to make plays. And, and uh, you know, so that's what he's going to try to do again Saturday night, you know, is get those guys in some open spaces where they can use their ability to, to go score. But, you know, again, these guys, uh, Baylor's so aggressive, you know, and, and so tough in what they do that I think they'll have a hard time. Yeah, strength. Gonna be and, and you mentioned open space. A guy that knows exactly what to do with open space is C.D. Lamb. As a former defensive back yourself, how do you go about trying to, to slow down? You probably can't stop a guy like that, right? No, he, he's the, the guy is definitely an NFL talent and he'll play a long time in the NFL. I don't think you can stop a guy like that, you know. Um, you, you've you just got to play your, your defense that you played all year long. I think that's the key for Baylor is, is to just do what they've done all year long. Um, and, and, and they'll have guys there to make plays. And, and, and I think that'll be a, another key for them is just to do what they've been doing and keep those guys in position to make plays. Tracy Saul, thank you so much for stopping by and, and bringing your perspective, a player's perspective, and certainly one that played at a high level. Thanks so much you for bet. stopping you by. You bet. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Plenty more still to come here on our Chasing a Championship special. We'll take a look at what the path to the playoff could look like for the Baylor Bears, well, how they could get into that Final Four. But before we go, did you know Baylor's defense has collected a turnover in 14 straight games dating back to their 2018 matchup with Texas Tech down the road at AT&T Stadium. This is the second longest streak in the nation. We'll be right back after the break. Need your news now? Visit fox44news.com and download the app today.
and watch Fox 44 News, streamed live at 5, 36, and 9. I love the flavors of Louisiana. You can have all the flavors of Louisiana cuisine right here in Waco. I am at Louisiana Crab Shack. Let's go check out all that is Louisiana cuisine. Let's go. This is our combo number one. It has a pound of snow crab, half a pound of tiger shrimp, corn, potatoes, and we even added in a half a pound of sausage. It's mixed with our own bottom of the bayou sauce in medium. It has a really good flavor. It's just enough spice. Liquid's new for Ariat. For Ariat clothing, shop Richie's, save money. all of us at Sanderson Farms. We wish you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Title Max offers two ways to get you the holiday cash you need. Get cash using your car title. Go to TitleMax.com, enter your car year, make, model. See how much you can get. Title Max also offers personal loans. No title required. Check out TitleMax.com when you need more cash. Check out TitleMax.com, shop us for eight. Get up to $2,500 with a personal loan or up to $10,000 using your car title. And you'll say, I got my title back with Title Max. It's a title back with Title Max. Liquid's new for Ariat. For Ariat clothing, shop Richie's, save money. Sponsored by the Waffle Den and the World's Greatest Waffle Mix. Check us out in Colleen or at worldsgreatestwafflesever.com. Oliver Brothers Transmissions has been serving Central Texas since 1965. Oliver Brothers is committed to providing fast and reliable transmission services to Central Texas. We are proud of our outstanding reputation over the years and appreciate our customers. We will always give you our best and want your business. So next time you need quality, affordable transmission service, stop by Oliver Brothers in Coppers Cove, Temple, Waco, and Bryan College Station. Visit us online at oliverbrotherstransmissions.com. Number of years, 30. Volunteers, over 375,000. Meals served, over 3.8 million. Reason? Just one. At HEB, we believe holidays are for sharing. Come enjoy a delicious meal at our annual HEB Feast of Sharing. We're from here, so we're helping here. You're watching Chasing a Championship. Brought to you locally by Louisiana Crab Shack, Oliver Brothers Transmissions, and Richie's Western Wear. There it is, so beautiful this time of year. Sundance Square in Fort Worth, decorated for the Christmas season. Time for the final segment here on Chasing a Championship. And Manny, I can tell you, you see a few Baylor fans around, some filtering past us here throughout the show. And I can tell that they probably want at least the Big 12 championship title under their Christmas tree. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, it's definitely going to be an exciting scene tomorrow at AT&T. If you thought it was a really exciting scene at McLean, wait till you check out some of the fans that we checked out with earlier. Uh, today we'll head out. We'll take a look at American Gardens. Uh, we'll take a look at American Gardens uh, Bar. There were some absolutely excited fans, former Baylor University graduates uh, that you were seeing right here, and they were very excited to do their Sikkim uh, and they will tell you what they're most excited about with Matt Rule taking over the program. I'm really looking forward to it. It's been a crazy, uh, basically, roller coaster ride the past couple of years. My senior year, they went 1 and 11. And last year, what? They went 7 and 6. And this year, they're in a championship game. Uh, I think it's been an amazing uh, work that Matt Rule's done at Baylor. I mean, it's a lot of excitement. We came from 1 and 11 two years ago. This season, expectations were kind of unknown after uh, a midway season. We made it to a bowl game last year. And now we're sitting at 11 and 1 and a chance at a Big 12 title and potentially more. It's crazy. Yeah, so there you go. 
one and possibly a Big 12 title and maybe some more. Obviously, the final rankings released on Sunday after this Big 12 championship game. So let's go ahead and take a look at where things stand right now as we enter this game. There's the top five right there, Ohio State, LSU, Clemson, and Georgia. Of course, Ohio State playing Wisconsin, LSU playing Georgia. And really, what kind of mirrors this game here in Arlington? You they are in serious trouble, down 23-7 to right now in the third quarter. So with that in mind, here's that next group that looks to benefit from that. Oklahoma's there at 6, Baylor, of course, at 7. So looks like the winner of this game, if that score holds, could be in pretty good shape. So with that in mind, here we go. Baylor, Oklahoma, what do you feel like Baylor needs to have happen in order for them to get into the college football playoff? Well, certainly things are not going their way right now because Utah, they need Utah to uh, the, to absolutely uh, lose, uh, or excuse me, they need to lose. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're good right Dear now. Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, Utah is good. Cheering. The Baylor Bears, cheering. Bears, sorry, yeah. the Baylor Bears yeah. are good now. Yeah, Utah needs to lose to Oregon, so that's in check. And then we have LSU that needs to beat Georgia. And then, of course, Ohio State has to take care of business with Wisconsin. But if all those pieces fall together, that's not going to be enough for the Bears to make it uh, into the college playoff because they have to dominate in a performance against the Sooners. They cannot just beat them because it's not going, going to be enough to impress the oh, committee. Oh, you! Dude, oh my gosh, it's not going to be enough to Sooner impress fan, the uh, committee. But, yes, it's not going to be enough to impress the uh, committee, but if all those things fall into place of, along with Utah losing, which they are doing right now, the Bears, I think that they should absolutely get a spot into the college playoff. Yeah, certainly things breaking right for them right Right now, the uh, Utes getting hammered right now by Oregon. So you have to think whoever wins this game tomorrow, this is a playoff game now. Yes. So you want to expand the playoff? Here's your expanded playoff. So we'll, I don't see any of those teams coming up, you know, barring some kind of defeat by LSU. That's the big one. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's a chance Ohio State loses to Wisconsin. But yeah. Georgia's defense is really, really good. LSU's offense is amazing, but they have not oh, yeah. seen a, a defense like Georgia's. So LSU has got to win that game. Because if LSU loses, that's your final four. Georgia's going to get that fourth spot. So as long as LSU wins, Ohio State wins, the winner of this game, you got to be feeling good about uh, going into the playoff at this point. So, Absolutely. All right, let's, let's take a look at some keys to the game. I'll give you here sure. first. We're going to start with taking the ball away. Jalen Hurts has struggled so much this year with ball security. We saw it in Waco a couple weeks ago. Make him give you a couple in this game and allow you to go those short fields. You think about Baylor was able to drive those short fields because they got the turnovers from Jalen Hurts. So make them turn the ball over, get some of those turnovers, leading the league in interceptions. Also, special teams. Special teams is the area that gets neglected in this matchup, but that's a big third area. Baylor has been down in special teams the return game has struggled a little bit, but the punting has been fantastic. Make Oklahoma drive the length of the field, win that special teams battle, and then lastly, you got to get the running game going. Matt Rule talks about it all the time. Good teams play defense and run the ball in November. That's what he wants to do. Run the ball, not when Oklahoma lets you, when you want to do it. What about you? Um, I would uh, say that there are definitely my three keys to the game. First off, they have to lock down C.D. Lamb. He's Oklahoma's number one wide receiver, leading the team in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. So and he was the fact that he wasn't there at McLean, it's going to be an X factor that Baylor needs to deal with. And, of course, they need to control time and possession. Oklahoma had it over 41 minutes, and then Baylor just under 19. And lastly, we need Charlie Brewer to have an impact on the ground. I mean, he had an incredible performance in their first matchup, rushed the ball, ran the ball 17 times, 75 five yards, two touchdowns, and the fact that he can throw the ball as well as he can run the ball, that's what makes Baylor's defense, or excuse me, that's what makes Baylor's offense so uh, dangerous. So hopefully that uh, all three things can happen for them, and I think that they can definitely come out with the win. Yeah, should be fun. 11 a.m. kickoff between Baylor and Oklahoma for the Big 12 championship. We've got a bunch of people out here that have never seen a camera before, but they yeah. are going to be excited when the ball gets kicked off tomorrow night. So one final thought. What, what does Baylor really need to do coming out of the gate tomorrow? I think that they really need to get on the board first. I mean, they have to control the tempo first off. They need to run the ball, establish a run, absolutely, and, uh, you know, get that time of possession started. What about you? Yeah, I think you've got to – you may want to take the ball first because that defense has done a fantastic job. You For go sure. down, score, maybe set the tone in this ball game because now you're in a position where you don't have to dominate Oklahoma to get into that college football playoff. you yes. got to win by one at this point if this score holds. So I think go take care of business. Keep this as a close game. We know Matt Rule teams in the fourth quarter yes. and the success that they've had. The first loss that he's had at Baylor when he's led going into the fourth quarter was against Oklahoma. So this Oklahoma team Absolutely. is a lethal one. But 
Offense versus defense, what more could you want in this one? It's all for the Big 12 Championship. 11 a.m. tomorrow at AT&T Stadium. We'll have you covered with full coverage and highlights tomorrow night on Fox 44 News at 9. Until then, though, live here in Sundance Square, she's Mandy, I'm Matt. We'll see you later.